Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jeanne Francine. So happy you're waking up with us here on Live Now on this Thursday, October 12th. Let's continue to get into our top stories. There on your screen, a live look out there as Israeli, Israeli missile strikes continue to impact that Gaza port. You can see that that boat is on fire with heavy plumes of smoke lifting into the sky and also fire on the boat. Right now, I want to switch gears and kind of talk about an important topic as it relates to this. A woman named Tell played dead while terrorists horrifically butchered her and her American Christian friend back in December of 2010. Tell not only survived, but through her actions in the attack, the Israeli government was later able to track and arrest the men. Since then, Tell has been an incredible advocate for Israeli and international victims of terror. Tell, thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. I know there's that time difference as you are in Israel. Um, first thing I want to say, viewer discretion is advised for this because your story is so compelling, but some of the images and some of the things we will hear, almost unreal. Um, if you could take us back in time to December of 2010, to that horrific day, and talk us through what happened to you and your American friend. Thank you, Gina, and I'd like to just thank the American people and the American government for standing unequivocally with Israel. It means a lot to us. <clears throat> and it's never, never a pleasure to do, but it's a privilege. I was working as a tour guide. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I was guiding an American friend and client, Christine Lucan, of blessed memory, American Christian. And we were hiking in an Israeli nature trail on a Shabbat afternoon, Sabbath, Saturday afternoon. And uh, it's I just need to explain where we were because it's not in it wasn't in Judea and Samaria or the so-called West Bank. It was in Israel proper. And there in the forest, uh, we were pounced on by two machete-wielding Hamas terrorists. And uh, they held us for half an hour. Uh, I mean, the dissonance, you know, in the most beautiful place in the forest and the birds are tweeting and you can smell the pines. And we have been held at knife point with machetes at our throat. And I don't know what's going on because the truth is I managed to stab one in the, in the nuts before you know, when we were struggling on the ground, I had a small pen knife and he didn't stab me back. So this half an hour is confusing and it's, uh, it, it's, it's, I can't, haven't yet found a language that adequately expresses fear. And after this half an hour, they, they go through my bag and they find my Israeli ID. Now, based on that, they assume also that my friend Christine Lucan is Jewish. So they start commanding me in Hebrew, take off your shoes, they tie us with our laces, uh, then they gag us, they tear up Christine's fleece, and then they separate us to like six feet away, force us on our knees, and they shout, Allah Akbar. Christine cries, Jesus help me. And I say, Shema Israel. <sighs> you know, it's like a divine cosmic symphony, right? And uh, they start butchering. And I am lying on my side, and he's leaning on me. And viewer discretion entirely, because he is plunging that knife into me so hard, I can hear my bones crush, crunch. And he's, he's bummed, because the jagged edge gets stuck in bone, and he's trying to drag it out, and he's doing it again and again. And then it goes in skin, and it's slicing my flesh. One sec. So all I could do was to think, you know, what I have to do is my only chance to survive this is to play dead. And I made a, I had to make a choice because people, buy, uh, they die with their eyes open. And I kept my eyes open and, and in six feet away, I, I just saw the most <laughs> life-changing barbaric scene of a innocent Christian woman being chopped up like a vegetable because her executioners believed her to be Jewish. And they left and they came back even to for Viduya Riga for the to ensure we're dead. And they roll me on my back and then, you know, there's this beautiful sunset and the sky is pink and orange and a little bit of purple and suddenly I see this silhouette of a man's hand clutching that knife that jagged edge. 
and he stabs me in the chest and that one missed my heart by four millimeters so they assume we're both dead christine is obviously dead and when they left i have one last goal in life and that is to die nearer where i parked the car so the police could find my body i had no idea or i'd never believed for one minute i'd live and i managed to stand and gag bound barefoot i have 13 machete wounds over 30 broken bones i had splinters of bones in my lungs and diaphragm i had a um a collapsed lung a dislocated shoulder a broken shoulder blade a sliced diaphragm and in that state gag bound barefoot i walked uphill through the thorns for over a mile until i found help now the end of that terrible day is that um obviously i was rushed to hospital and i have to say this this is very important because i'm going to say some tough things it was, a, it was an Israeli Muslim surgeon who saved my life. And everybody should hear that. And every time I speak, I'm telling you it was a Muslim surgeon that saved my life. All right. Now, the, Christine's body is found. I, I face my assailants in court. And, um, and this is also recorded on an Israeli documentary where when you actually you see the police interviewing the, the murderers and they say this verbatim. Why did you choose this place? They're in the forest at crime scene. And the, the Sarah says, we wanted to kill. Kill who? Jews. What's the reason? No reason. Now, what I want to say about this, and I'm, I'm probably a really rude interviewee, but I just want to occupy this um, time slot, if I may, with your permission. What I want to say about this is that this conflict, no, it's not even a conflict, this is a war. This war, essentially, is not firstly about land. My attackers did not cry free Palestine, okay? It's Allah Akbar and slaughter the Jews. This is simply a continuation of pogroms that began in the seventh century against Jews and continued through the Crusades, by the way, by Christians who also murdered Muslims and right through the Holocaust. And even before the State of Israel was, was founded, when we had a small Jewish community here, they were slaughtered in the places such as Hebron, Hebron and Jaffa, all right? So there's always been these murders of Jewish people without any connection to a so-called occupation. And so we are talking about, and I heard um, the Secretary of State speech, I thought it was incredibly moving. Um, we are talking about a war where there are two sides, right? People like to talk about the two sides, the what aboutism. It's heinous, it is moral bankruptcy. But yes, there are two sides. And the sides of this, it's savagery or civilization. It's a war against evil and good. It's dark against light. It's cruelty against kindness. And it's death against life. This is a war of civilization that goes far beyond the boundaries of these atrocities and this savagery that my people have endured over the last few hours. And that needs to be tackled. And may I, can I just give all your wonderful viewers, can I give them some inspiration to Absolutely. be part of this moral war? All right, now I, I, I can't believe two things. It's I mean, Obviously I can hardly believe what's happened. And none of us can in Israel. We're a broken nation, but by goodness, we are a determined nation. We're a nation of fighters. We're used to this. This is 3,000 years old. But what I would say to journalists like yourself and to viewers is firstly this. We are already starting to see, before even all our bodies are cleared from the streets and we have hostages from 26 countries in the hands of these barbarians, we are already to see, starting to see on media the what about. Let's present the two sides, OK? Now, I, I am absolutely convinced, and I'll paraphrase again, it was a Muslim surgeon that saved my life, all right? Nobody can get me on Islamophobia. But I'm absolutely convinced that by giving a platform in the name of balance and hearing both sides, that is irresponsible, and it could be the death blow to Western civilization, and I mean that with all seriousness. And these kind of uh, stations that are offering people a chance to espouse the both sides syndrome must be challenged. And I don't mean Middle Eastern men with funny accents. I mean 
handsome and beautiful looking American people who come across and they speak great English. They look just like you and just like me. These people are an enemy to society, albeit may be well-meaning. And the other thing I'll say is this. I just had a friend of mine, a Jewish lady, she was speaking, uh, she texted me, she lives in London. And she says, my children in London, my children have been told to take off their school uniforms. They go to a, a Jewish school, you know, you have a Star of David on their blazer. And uh, they, children, Jewish children have been threatened. And we see in Jewish restaurants being trashed in London. We see Jewish protests against, against the Jewish state happening after this terrible pogrom. Also, we see it in, in America. Now, you can say, and America really is the greatest democracy in the world. That's without a doubt. The freedom of speech is incredibly important. But what people need to know is that if you have freedom of speech, you also have to take responsibility for the results and consequences of what your speech does. And if your speech is causing children to be terrified and the Jewish community worldwide are feeling threatened for their lives, these very protesters should be arrested and charged with incitement to terrorism. Tell first thing I want to say is thank you so much for your bravery. I know you haven't spoken to a national outlet in America until today. And just hearing your story, it's hard to, you know, you're fighting back tears and I have chills. So one, thank you for sharing this story. Um, just to put things into perspective, you know, you literally had knives shoved into your body. And actually, I want to show these images to our viewers. Um, you can see it there on your screen. Seeing those bruises, tell, seeing the knife cuts on your body, and then you had to play dead just so you could be here today to talk to us about it. How are you feeling I seeing these images? I don't really want to look at them. I'm kind of just staring into space, to be honest. But no, I, I, I can go back there. And listen, I, I do want to mention, all right, that the prisoners were arrested. They were sentenced to prison. And I think one of the most abhorrent uh, issues is, and I, I want to say this kindly to America, because I think America is a very decent nation, all right? And, and Americans and the Europeans, they generally want to believe the good in mankind. But the world does not work like that, okay? It's not everybody is a good person. And in America's desire to try and find some kind of peace and look at both sides, for the last few years, the American taxpayers have been funding the likes of the Palestinian Authority, who are rewarding the people who did this to me and to an American Christian, a taxpayer's salary. They have re received millions of shekel, and that goes for every single terrorist captured in Israel's prisons. And that's another thing that we should be, I hope that the Secretary of State, who made the most wonderful speech, when he meets with Mahmoud Abbas tomorrow, who, by the way, the, he's the leader of the PLO in Fatah, and I know we're all overwhelmed with this amazing, uh, unspeakable atrocities that we've had now, but the Fatah and the PLO have actually murdered more Jews than Hamas. And another thing I want to say to you, excuse me for being a little passionate here, mm -hmm. is you're talking about a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, humanitarian. what's a humanitarian crisis? The hostages, let's not forget these hostages, all right? The other humanitarian crisis is this. You know that uh, in, after the State of Israel was founded, uh, how do you call it? The United Nations Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, set up like things like Palestinian refugee camps. Now, for the last 75 years, UNRWA, and I call on America to make a public inquiry, UNRWA have been funded by billions and billions, hear that figure, put it across your screen, billions and billions of dollars. And these dollars could have rehabilitated the entire Gaza into a Beverly Hills. But instead of that, you have squalor. And not only do you have squalor, these thugs who crossed over the border and they murdered my people, these thugs have been educated in UNRWA schools. There must be a public inquiry as to where the money has gone. There must be outrage and arrests made at protests on American streets. And there must be an absolute blockade on any media that is going to host somebody who feels it necessary to draw a moral equivalent between innocent Palestinian civilians being killed in bombs and thugs who behead babies. 
Tell, when you think of your American Christian friend that was visiting with you back in December of 2010 and she did nothing wrong and you had to play dead and watch her be dehumanized and butchered, when you think of why she was there in the first place and she was murdered simply because they thought she was a Jew, when you think of her memory, what comes to mind? Oh, that question makes me want to cry. Because, you know, in Judaism, we choose life, right? We are a life-giving people. I am so proud of my people, really. The Jewish community, the Jewish nation, the state of Israel is the most beautiful, fantastic country in the history of mankind. What we're seeing on the streets of Israel today is an incredible display of unity, people choosing life. Now, however, when you see the murder of a human being, their life is very hard to remember because she's only remembered for me in those last moments. But if I could draw myself back to this, and you know, it's sheer evil doesn't actually make me cry. You kind of get a, what do you call, a shutdown. A, 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 I forget the word in English. Uh, opaque, like you're opaque to evil penetrating, you know. But when you see kindness, that makes me weep. And I see, I remember Christine to be a very giving and loving person and never had any personal agenda, uh, wanted to the, believe, Christine really wanted to believe in the good of everybody. And that was magnificent. And she did absolutely nothing wrong. Tell, I know you have to go soon. Um, before you do, you know, we are watching right now everything unfold against the war in Israel. And some of these people experiencing the same thing you did. They're being butchered, they're being raped, they're being forced to say things they don't believe, they're being stripped from their families, and that's just saying it nicely. As you're watching all of this unfold, is it kind of um, PTSD for you? Does it take you back to what you experienced back in December? Um, you know, what it are you feeling as you see yeah. your people deal with what you dealt with back then? No, it absolutely does. And uh, the first couple of days were, were extremely difficult. I mean, it's difficult for everyone. That's like an understatement, saying the Second World War was a bit inconvenient, right? But incredibly difficult. But I managed, you know, I have so many friends, true friends. I got, I've got a family here who are 8 million people, brothers and sisters. And I realized after two, three days, I, I, I can articulate what happened to me. I can speak for those who are no longer here to speak for themselves or those who are not able to utter the things that went on. In fact, that the, that's one thing I want to say, what we're seeing. There's no language for this. We cannot, there should be like a sacred silence and just retribution to the Hamas. So I, I don't really know what to say. I, I, it, I do have PTSD. I have terrible PTSD. I function on one gear. But I feel that my resolve and my commission as a Jew, as a human being, as an Israeli, is able in me to uh, overcome my own reticence and apprehension and angst in retelling my story. So I count it as a privilege. And I'm very, very thankful to you and the great people of the United States and your government for the support of myself and our people. Tell Hartuv, a survivor of Palestinian terror. Thank you so much for being brave and reliving this here with us as we're watching and hearing your words, not only hearing your words, but feeling it. Of course, um, we'll be in touch to make sure that things are still going well with you as far as your mental as you're watching all of this unfold. But um, again, thank you for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you, Gina.